I really want to go up to someone and be like, oh my god, I designed that, but that might be kind of weird, I feel, so I, I haven't, but yeah, it's I, it's a to it's the most awesome feeling to go and uh, see somebody else obviously like your stuff enough to go ahead and buy it and wear it. Uh, I'm Alishka Jepsen, I'm Robbie Riker on Spoonflower. By day, I'm an aerospace engineer, and in the evenings, I am a graphic and fabric designer. Where does Robbie Riker come from? This is kind of a silly story. Um, so back when I was uh, 12, you know, in the olden days of the internet, um, uh, that was when I first started actually getting like an email account and, and things like that. And everybody, uh, you know, my mom had never seen the internet or dealt with it. She's like, you gotta pick a fake name for the internet so nobody can trace it back to you. And um, I'm a huge Trekkie, so I picked Riker because Commander Riker on Star Trek. And uh, I'm like, I need something to go with it. I'm like, eh. Robbie sounds cool. Let's just go and slap those two together. And so it has literally been my screen name since I was 12 years old. And I have always had that. And I just kind of kept with that. So that's how I've always been identified on the internet uh, through the years. So so I first started designing when I was in college uh, back in 20, uh, 2004 um, is when I first started um, I had a, a shop in one of the other print-on-design t-shirt shops. Um, I'd wanted a shirt when I was in college uh, that said, actually, I am a rocket scientist. I, I couldn't find that anywhere, so um, I had you know, a basic Photoshop uh, version on my computer. I'm like, I can design that. You know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And so I uploaded that to that site, and I noticed they had the option that you could also sell. I'm like, yeah, we'll see if somebody wants to buy one of these shirts, too. And uh, within a couple months, I'd sold a couple shirts, and like, it kind of became addicting after that. You know, you uh, keep designing, creating. Um, and then in 2011, um, I got, that's when I got married, and I had made an uh, invitation for our wedding, and I wanted uh, uh, tablecloths to go and match the invitation. And so I just Googled on the Internet, uh, you know, print-on-demand fabric, and Spoonflower came up. And that's... Uh, how I got started, I was like, well, this is pretty cool. You know, I can translate my design work into fabric. Um, and I had done a little bit of sewing at that point in time. And it was, it was, you know, from there again, it's addicting. You go and just keep designing. And um, it was nice that people started buying some of my fabric. And so it, it, you just kind of get hooked in with that. <laughs> And so I'll first sit down and I'll think about um, what are the design elements that I want to have and whatever I'm, I'm going to uh, be working on. And so I'll start working on that. And this one, um, I kind of knew that I, I've been into the uh, mid-century modern atomic kind of style lately. Um, and so I thought, okay, this might be fun to go ahead and do. And so I, I first drew the dog and then the planet and the rock. So I draw all of the elements out first. And then once I kind of have, I'm happy with them, I'll just pick like four or five colors to begin with and we'll play around with them. And then um, I'll start laying them out in some kind of repeat and ship things around until it kind of looks good. And uh, finally, I'll play around with the colors until I get something that um, looks good. And, um, I mostly design an illustrator. Illustrator has a couple good uh, color chooser tools that we'll just cycle through and then play around with to get something that plays harmoniously together. <laughs> for the most part, I, I try to design for what I like. Um, I, I definitely, I participate in a lot of the contests that Spoonflower, I try to go and do every week. Um, and that's, uh, I try to go and put whatever my spin on the contest entry that week. Um, and so sometimes a lot of that, it might be a theme that I oh, I'm, wouldn't have thought of to go design um, on my own. But for the most part, everything else that I work on, not having a whole lot of time each night to go and design, uh, it'll, it'll be whatever interests me. Since there's not a lot of STEM-focused uh, fabrics, um, most of what I do in the STEM field tends to sell fairly well, and so I, I'll design whatever I want, and usually usually it sells okay. So I, I, I guess I'm um, finding that niche has helped me um, just pretty much do whatever I want, and, and I do make money off of that, so it's nice. <laughs> The big challenge for me when I'm designing is first off just finding time and usually I don't I never have as much time to work on things as I would like to and uh, yeah if, if a design doesn't go the direction I want in the first place um, not being having a whole lot of art training um, a lot of times I have a hard time translating what's in my head to what's on the computer or even on paper um, and so uh, I'll find a lot of times I'll start going in one direction and I won't be happy with it but then I might try a different direction and you know, I'm like, oh, I actually like that better than what I had originally intended. So it's, um, yeah, for me not having the art training is sometimes getting what's up here onto the fabric at the end of the day. <laughs> when I first started designing with Spoonflower, it was um, a lot of, a lot more technical, very not as artistic based uh, designs. Uh, one of my first big sellers was kind of periodic table fabric. Um, so with the uh, periodic elements, which, I mean, there's, 
there's not a whole lot artistic about that. It's more kind of a technical uh, drawing aspect. I've noticed as time's progressed, I've kind of started to go and play around with my style and learn um, new techniques to go and make, uh, I think, things that look a little bit more uh, artistic and, and graphically representative than just, you know, straight up technical drawing. There's such a great community around Spoonflower as well. Designers are more than welcome to go and uh, help each other out and you get, uh, it's a nice sense of community that I don't think you get at a lot of other um, print on design uh, companies elsewhere. Um, and to me, it's helped me make uh, other connections to go and uh, put my designs out there. Uh, one example is Princess Awesome is a company I started working with in 2014. Uh, they make dresses for girls with themes that you might not normally find on dresses like uh, rockets, dinosaurs, uh, uh, fire trucks, things like that. Again, typically boy clothes. Um, and they, uh, it's been really great to go and um, be able to go and pair my STEM fabric designs with them and uh, get those out there for little girls that might become scientists, engineers, um, and have them something, have them be able to have an article of clothing that reflects their interests that they can wear and, um, you know, show it's, you know, it's okay that you like this and go forward with that. Uh, you know, if you're a girl going into the tech industry, um, it still is very much male dominated. As an aerospace engineer, I think that's one of the fields that's um, there are the fewest women that are, are pursuing, and it's uh, you just got to keep working at it and don't get discouraged by anything. That um, you know, if you're even if you're the only woman in a room, you still have to keep on and keep working, and um, just do your best always. That's the one piece of advice: uh, do your best and, and don't give up. Just keep. If you really love what you're doing, you got to go and pursue it no matter what. It doesn't matter if, you know, you're the only girl or not. You know, see where your creativity takes you um, and uh, take a risk and see what other people think about it. And it's, uh, it's so much fun and uh, you might as well go ahead and participate.